Hi friends, this is Bakapa. Welcome back to Tester Stock channel. In this tutorial, I will discuss three topics. The first topic is how to create and run the testng suit file at runtime. And the second topic is how to generate the testng suit file at runtime. And the third topic is so here I have created just now a test runner Excel file. So if you look at here, so total we are having two columns. The first one is run and the second one is test method. In the test method column, we are specifying all our test method names. And, and if we look at the run column, so here we are specifying yes or no. So if I specify yes, so that particular test method will be getting executed. And if I specify the no, so those test methods will be not getting executed. So in a nutshell, so based on the yes or no, we are going to execute the test method and also we are going to create the test ng suit file in the automation framework. So let's start with the first topic, how to create and run the test ng suit file at runtime. I will go inside the com dot test automation dot api testing dot tests. So here I'm adding a one class called So here I'm adding the one public static white main class and here I'm specifying the class name as create dynamic test ng suit file. So that's it. I'll click on finish. So let me open this class and maximize it. Sorry guys. So that's it guys. So now we are having the one public static wide main class. So here, what we have to do is, so let me open similarly uh, one of the suit file so that we can uh, understand bit better. So here I'm opening retry test.xml file. So here I will list out what are the steps we have to do to create and run the test ng suit file at runtime. The very first step is we need to create the test ng object. And after that, Finally, we will be using the same object to run the test ng suit file. So these are the two steps it is common for run, running any of the test ng suit file. So if, if you are creating a multiple suit files also. So now, so right now we are having this suit file inside this. So there are multiple tags. So basically we need to pre prepare this whole content. So firstly, we need to create the suit class object that's the XML suit and followed by we have to set a couple of parameters for this name of the suit and uh, whether we are running it uh, parallelly or not and what is the thread count. So like that, we have to set the couple of parameters and then we need to create the XML test object and here also we need to specify the thread count and what is the test name like this parameters we have to set it and then we need to create a, another object called XML classes and then finally so we need to set all the test methods for example here we have specified the complete path of the class and also we are so here while creating a dynamic test ng suit file so here we will be adding all our test method names for example if I open one of the test class so here we are we have added the test method name so this test method name we have to provide it while creating the dynamic test ng suit file so where we are specifying whether i want to if i want to run that particular test method simply we can pass that test method over there and uh, simply it will runs that particular test method so after creating the sorry after setting the all the test methods after creating the class object and we, we have to set the simply all the test methods which are there inside this particular class and then finally we need to set the suit file and we, we can run the suit file so let's add the another couple of steps. So what we have to do? So firstly, we have to create the test ng object. And by using this one, we can run the test ng suit file. So in between, we need to prepare this particular content. So firstly, we have to create an object of suit, right? So that's the reason here I'm writing the step as create suit object. And similarly, we need to create a test object. So let me add next step as create test object and next step is we need to create the class object and after creating the class object here we are passing the complete path of the class where 
where actually we have implemented all our test methods so in our case we have to add all the test methods then we have to add test ng suit files if we are having multiple suit files test ng suit files if multiple so that's it guys so let's create a object of the test ng now so here i'm creating a object of test ng so this object we are mainly using for adding all our suit file and we are simply running all the added suit files so here i'm saying new new operator and a test ng then finally i'm using this test ng object at the end in the line number 23 simply i'm saying here run so that's it so in between let's start implement let's start creating a object of the suit that's a xml suit and we'll set the couple of parameters here i'm adding a object of xml suit that is and after that we'll set the couple of parameters so here i'm specifying the reference variable name as xml suit and after that i'm specifying the new operator and followed by that i'm adding the xml suit class so here we are creating the object of the xml suit and after creating that we have to pass the couple of parameters over here so firstly we have to set the name of the suit so here i'm saying uh, suit one and also we need to set the parallel mode so by using the xml suit reference variable here i'm saying uh, set parallel and inside this one we have to specify the xml suit dot parallel mode dot methods so we want to run our test methods if i want to run my test methods in parallel mode so we have to set the this particular parameter and after that so we need to set the thread count as well right so if i want to run the if i want to perform the parallel execution so here i'm saying thread set thread inside this one we can specify the any number and after that i'm setting another property that is the set verb rows so here i'm passing some value so that is fine so mainly we are setting this particular value to print the test ng logs in the console output so that's it so this is what you need to do inside the creating the suit object and let's start creating the test object as well so here we have to use the xml test and after that simply i'm specifying the reference variable then i'm creating the object of xml test so what you need to do is because this particular xml test we are creating the test object under this particular suit so that's the reason we need to pass this xml suit reference variable that is object to the xml test so that this particular xml test that is a test object it will be it will be tagged to the our xml suit so by using this xml test i am setting two values first one is test name so set name so here is we are specifying the as here i'll say test name one so it is very much similar what whatever the values are present inside the our suit file so if you look at here for this particular test we are having the name for that right so similarly for suit also we are having the name of the suit so like this we are setting the values to the respective objects so after setting the name i'm setting the one more property called so basically if if i want to run any test method in particular order for example by default test ng suit file will be executed so every test will run in the alphabetic order by default if i'm not setting any property so that's the reason here i'm setting the here basically here i'm saying set preserve order in the sense so it will run in a alphabetic order so that's it so these are the two parameters you need to set inside the xml test now let's create the xml class object so here i'm here i'm saying xml class and followed by new operator so that's it so let's try to imp import the xml 
class from the org.testng.xml. So that's it. So now, if you look at this suit file, so here we are passing the complete path of the class. So similar way, what I'm doing is, so here I'm opening one of the re test retry class and simply I'm passing the complete path of this Java class. So here I'm passing inside the XML class. So you need to pass complete path of the class inside the double quotation. So you need to pass it as a string basically. So once you're done with the setting the complete or a qualified class name of the test methods. So we need to start adding all the methods from this particular class, right? So what I will do simply I'll go inside the next step. So here I'm creating the array list object. So here I'm saying new array list. So here I'm specifying the one generic type that is XML include. And I will assign back to the list type. So generic type also we have to specify it as XML include. And followed by I will specify the reference variable name as all methods. So that's it. So let's try to import the list and XML include. So after importing all the classes and interfaces, so here I'm using the all methods. Sorry, let me modify this reference variable. So after getting this reference variable, simply here I'm using the add. Then we will pass the object of XML include. So inside this XML include, we will be passing the test method name. So in our case, so we have the one test method. So as of now, we will add only one test method. So later we will add a few more dummy test methods. So I'll go inside the Java class and simply I'll copy this test method name. So here I'll add it. So if you are having multiple test method names, simply you can use this all methods and simply you can add by using the add method, you can include all your test method names over here. So that's it. So after adding the test methods, so we need to tag this, all these test methods to the class level. So how we have done it in your, in our test ng suit file. So after having the class, so after having the class and uh, test methods, we have to tag that into the class level. And after that, we need to tag this into the test level. So similarly, so here in our class also, here I'm using the object of XML class by using this one. So simply I'm calling to the one method called set include. So here we have to pass the list of all the test methods. So simply I'm passing all methods reference variable. This contains the list of test method names. So we are passing th this particular object over here. So that's it. So this is where we are tagging to the class. And after that, so we need to do one more step here. So after setting all these test methods to the class level, we need to set all these method names and also XML class object to the test level also. If you look at here, so at the top, we are having the test. So that's the reason what I'm doing is simply I'm using the XML test object by using this one. So simply here I'm saying get classes. So inside the get classes, so after calling get classes method, here I'm saying add. So simply we can pass the XML object. So here we are having the XML class object. So simply I'm copying this reference variable that is a class object. I'm passing over here. So that's the reason. So sorry, that's it. So after adding all the test methods, so we are setting all test methods. That's a list of test methods to the XML class. And of once we are having all the test methods, we are setting this XML class object to the test level. So that's it. That's it for the adding the all the test methods. And also we are including all our test methods at the test level. Now let's add the suit file over here. So here I'm creating again the one more array list object. So here I'm saying uh, suit list. And here in the generic class name, I will specify XML suit. 
So simply I'll copy this XML suit over and that will add to the list as well. So that's it. So here, if you look at here, so as of now, we are having only one suit created. If you look at here, so this is our class package name and these are all methods and this is only one suit. So we, as of now, we are having one suit. If, if we are having multiple SNG suit files created, then we have to pass all these object to the our suit list. So here I'm using the suit list object. So that is our XML suit object. Sorry guys. So here I'm using the array list reference variable by using this one simply here I'm saying add. So inside this, I'm passing the our XML suit object over here. That's it. So as of now, we are having only one XML test engine suit. If we have created multiple suit object, that's XML suit object, you can simply add by using the XML suit dot, you can, by using the add method, simply you can add the, your suit to the list of suit object. So once we have added the XML suit, so what we have to do is, we have to simply set this particular suit list object to the, our test engine object. So in the first line, we have created an object of the test engine. So we have to say to the test engine, we have to say to the test engine saying that we are having a list of suit files. As of now, we are having only one. You can try to add multiple suit files by using this object. Here I'm setting XML suit. So if you look at here, so here we have to pass the list of XML suit files. So simply I'll pass this reference variable over here. That's it guys. So let me summarize once again what we have done so far. So firstly we have created created and created an object of test ng. Then after creating the object of test ng, we have created the object of suit. There we are setting couple of parameter values and then we are creating the object of test and we are setting the couple of values for the test level. And after that we are specifying the class path by using the XML class object and after that we are including all the test methods and then finally we are adding our XML suit object and then we are setting our list of XML suit object to the our test engine object then finally by using this test engine object we are running it here so that's it guys so let's run this class and it should execute the API test successfully so let me open even console output as well so it is started running so it looks like there is one failure so it is saying that there is some status code is not matching so let's go go to that class and we'll modify it so here i'll pass 200 so that's it i will go back to the our class and again simply i will run this class So API test is getting executed. So as of now, we have added only one test. And if you look at here, total test run is one and that is getting passed. There are zero failures. So let's try to add two more dummy tests inside the test retry class. Here I'll say, just I'll copy this test method and then So I'll specify the test method name as E2E API test2 and here I'll say simply system dot out dot println and here I'll print E2E API test sorry EP, sorry E2E API request2 is running. So similarly I will add another test as E2E API request. So that's it. So let's go to the our create dynamic test ng suit file class. So let's add another two test methods. So if you look at line number 36, so here we are we have added the test method name and I will add another two test methods. That is a E2E API request 2 and E2E API request 3. So now this time it should execute three test methods. So if you look at here, so already uh, E2E API request 2 and 3 got executed and uh, right now the third API test is running and if you look at here, total test run is 3 and also all are passing, there are 0 failures. So this is how you can 
create and run testng suit file at runtime. So far you have seen how to create and run the testng suit file at runtime. Now I will start discussing about how to generate the testng suit file at runtime. So I will go back to the same class create dynamic testng suit file class. So here here I'll add the step name as generate testng suit file at runtime. So that's it. So it is very easy. Just we need to write uh, four lines of code by using that we will be able to generate the testng suit file at runtime. So here I am just declaring one file writer reference variable. Writer here I'll say file writer and after that I'm specifying the try and catch block. So inside the try and catch block I'm creating the object of file writer. If you have not imported a file writer please import the file writer class in your current package. Here I'm using the reference variable of file writer and after that I'm specifying the new operator and then I'm adding the file writer class name. So that's it. So we need to specify the location where we want to generate the runtime test ng suit file. So that's the reason I'm going inside the file writer class and here I'm specifying the file object. Inside the file object, I'm specifying the location. So directly I'm adding the file name here. So if I'm adding directly file name, so it will simply generate the test ng suit file under the our current project root folder. Somewhere it will come over here. So where currently we are having the testng.xml file. So if I'm if I want to generate the my runtime testng file inside the suits folder, we have to specify something dot slash and followed by suits. Like this, we have to specify the file name and after that we have to specify the XML. So right now I want to generate my testng file inside the or project root folder only. So that's the reason I'm directly specifying the suit file name. So here I'm saying runtime test ng suit file dot xml. So that's it. So here we have specified the file location where we want to generate the our test ng suit file at runtime. By using this file writer, now we have to write the our whole content into the file, right? So that's the reason here I'm calling to the method called write. So inside this we have to specify the our test ng xml suit. So here I'm simply copying the xml suit object. So this particular object contains the whole data which is used to create the test ng file and also we are using the same um, xml suit object for running the our test ng suit file. And I will convert this into the to xml. So that's it guys. So here we have specified the file location where we want to generate the our test ng suit file. And by using the right method, we are writing the all the content to this particular file. And after that, simply we have to flush it and close the file. So here I'm calling to the method called flush. And after that, I'm closing the file. So that's it. By using these, these four lines, we can create the testng suit file. So now let's run this Java class. Here I'll say run as Java application. And if you look at here, right now there is no file. So once the ex execution is completed, we can refresh the whole project and we can check it whether uh, testng suit file is generated at runtime or not. And if you look at here, so total test run is three and all are passing, there are zero failures. And let's come back to the project. So if you see here, right now that particular file is not present. So whatever the file name here we have provided, runtime testng suit file. So if I refresh my project, automatically it will appear. So if you see here, so there is a suit file, runtime test ng suit file. So I have opened it and also you can see the, all the content is present over here, right? So this is how you can generate the test ng suit file at runtime. So far you have seen how to create and run the test ng suit file at runtime. And also I have discussed how to generate the test ng suit file at runtime. Now I will start discussing about how to run the test methods based on the yes or no from the excel file. So let's prepare the excel file first. That is our test runner excel file. 
so i will go inside the src test resources folder so let's create the test runner excel file where we will add the all the test method names and also we will add the one more configuration called run column with respect to that we will add the yes or no so here i'll go to the location of the src test resources folder and here i'm creating a one excel file called test runner so that's it i will open the test runner excel file so here i'm adding the first column name that is the header in the first row run and after that i'm adding the second column name as test method so in the test method column we are adding all our test method names i will go back to the eclipse and i will copy all the test methods so here i'm referring again to the retry that's a test retry class so here we are having E2E API request one test and we are having a, another two test that is E2E API request two E2E API request three. So let's add these three tests to the our Excel file. So here I have added the first test method name and second test method name and here I'm adding the third test method name. So if if you are having 100 test methods simply you can add it in the b column that is a test method and here in the first column that is a run column in this column we, we have to specify whether i want to run this particular test method or not by specifying the yes or no so here firstly let's specify yes for all three test method and we will execute all three test method first time and after that later we will modify this configuration we will try to execute only one test from this list so simply I'll select this one. I'll say all border. So that's it. So let's close this our te test runner Excel file. And now I will go back to the another package. So we have created our test runner. So inside the SRC test resources folder, let me refresh this project. So it will appear now and here it is there. So we are having the test runner class, sorry, the test runner Excel file. And let's add this location of this test runner inside the file name constants Java class. So here I'll add the test runner location. So here I'll add the variable name as test runner. Then I'll specify the file name as test runner dot Excel SX. So that's it. So we have created the test runner and also we have defined the we have declared the file location now i will come back to the our create dynamic test ng suit file class so if you look at here in the line number 43 44 45 so previously we were hard coding all the test method names so let's comment this part so this time we are reading it from the our test runner excel file so here i'm what i'm doing is simply i'm using the Fillow, fillow Maven dependency by using that I'm creating the object of fillow and I'm specifying the fillow class. So here I'm using them as as I said. So we have discussed this this particular Maven depend, dependency in the previous tutorial and also we have discussed how to read the test data file test data from the Excel file also by using the fillow Maven dependency. So here I'm declaring two reference variable first one is record set and here i'll say record set and i'll assign the null and also i'm declaring another reference variable called connection and i will assign the null value as of now so that's it so you can import the fillow from the maven dependency that is called fillow maven dependency and also you need to import the record set and you need to import the connection from the fillow api now so here i'm writing the try and catch block inside this by using the fillow object i'm creating the connection to the our test runner excel file so here we have to specify the file location so here i'm saying file name constants dot test runner so this is where we have added the test runner excel file location 
So simply I'm specifying the our static variable name by using this we can get the file location. So once we are having the file location, once we are having the connection, then I will assign back to the our connection reference variable. By using the connection reference variable, we can execute the query. So before that, let's prepare the query now. So here I'll say string and query. So simply I'll say select star from and you need to provide the sheet name. So I will open the our test runner Excel file. So right now, if you look at here, so our sheet name is sheet one. So that's the reason I will provide the select star from sheet one. So that's it. We have the query ready. And now by using this connection, I can execute the query. So here I'll say execute query and simply I'm passing this query over here. And then after executing the query, we will get the record set. Then I'll take this record set reference variable and I'll assign, assign the execute query result to the our record set. So once we are having the record set from the Excel file, that's the data set, we can iterate through by using the while loop. So simply I'm using the while condition here by using the record set. I'm running this while loop here. I'm calling to the method called next. So this particular while loop runs till the end of the records. If there is no record found, then only it will come out of this while loop. So until unless this condition is true, if there is a record, it will go inside the while loop and it will return all the rows from the, our test data file. So now, so what, by using this record set, what I will do, I'm writing another if condition inside the while loop by using, by using the record set, I'm calling to the method called get field. So inside this one, I'm specifying the first column name as run and I'm getting the, let's say for the first time, we got the first row result. For example, we, so one by one, so this particular record set will returns as the one by one row data by using this row data. Here we are going to check. Firstly, we are checking this run column and we are getting the respective value. Is it equals to the? Yes. And if this particular value is S, for example, we got the first row. If this value is run value is S and we need to get the test method name. So that's the reason. So here I'm actually writing the if condition. Firstly, I'm checking run value is yes or no. If it is yes, come inside this one and simply we will use this particular all methods object. That's our list object. By using that, we can simply how we are adding previously, right? Test methods. Simply we can add it by specifying the key as the test method name over here. So now, so here we are checking the condition. If test case is updated with the yes, if test method is updated with the yes as the run value, then come inside this one and get the our test method name. So here I'll say get field. So here I'm specifying the this particular key here. That is a test method. So that's it. So this will returns me the test method name. For example, so if I'm taking the first, we, let's say we got the first row and here we are checking the condition. So run is yes or no. So it is yes. And if it is yes, then only it will come inside this if condition and it will get the this particular key value. So that's the our test method name, right? So that's it. That's how this loop will run. And after that, simply we by so this will, but this particular while, while loop will run. And by using that, it will get all the test methods. So once we have the test methods by using this one, so by using the all test methods, we can simply add all the test methods to the our array list object. So here I'm adding the same statement. So instead of passing this, so we are passing the record set dot get field inside the our new XML include object. So that's it. So basically we need to pass the string in the form of string we have to pass that is a method name. So this time we are getting it from the our Excel file by using the fill Maven dependency and we are adding it here. That's it. It is very simple. And now after getting all the 
test method simply we have to close the connection so at the end it will say close so that's it guys so now let's run this as the java application so this time it should execute all three test methods because uh, we have updated all the three test methods with the s as a flag and if you look at here our console output so our api test is getting executed and at the end we we are able to see the total test run is three and also all the three tests are passing there are zero failures now i will come back to the our test runner here i'll say don't save so now here i will make yes for only one test method here i'll update no for the first two test methods so this time only e to e api request three test should be getting executed so let's validate this one so let's run the our suit file so this time it will be very quick because there is nothing inside the our e to e api request 3 and if you look at here so total test run is 1 and that is getting passed there are zero failures so this is how you can run the test methods based on the sr no from the excel file Hi friends, this is Bakapa. Welcome to API testing full course. You can access all the exercise which we have done in the whole API testing course. I have already provided this uh, link in the video description. So anyone can access this link and also you can get the whole collections and also the envir environment variable details. So you can take that URL which is there in the description of this below video and paste it in the web browser. And after that, so once it is opened, so you need to export this uh, collections into the your local system. So it will open like this after ex accessing the link. So this is a public access URL which which I have shared it. You can <clears throat> click on this booking API. You can see all the APIs are there inside the two folders. So what you can do is you can click on this three dots and you can export it. So you can click on this export and firstly you can export this booking api collection and after that on the right side you can select the booking api environment and after that click on this icon and click on the edit then you can click on three dots and you can click on this export so this will export the environment variable details so after exporting it so you will get the these two files and once once you have the, these two files you can go to the postman and you can click on this import and make sure you are there in this uh, file tab and you can click on choose files and you can select the first link collection that's the postman collection and you can open it and after that you can click on import so firstly you can load the postman collection and after that you can load the environment details so as I have already these APIs in my system, I don't want to import it. And this is how you can get the exercise which we have done in the API testing full course. You can find all the code which I have discussed in the rest assured 
EBA testing full course. You can search with the Bakapai and GitHub in the google.com and here you can go to the my github repository and over here in the repositories tab you will find the rest assured api testing framework you can go inside the this repository and you can click on this code and you can copy this uri and by using this uri and you can simply use the git in your local machine and you can simply clone it by using the git clone and followed by that specify the url so you will get the whole code which i have discussed in the rest assured api testing full course